Go. Okay. Um. So, dann hallo, herzlich willkommen zurück aus der Mittagspause. Ich hoffe, ihr habt alle gut gegessen, wart schön auf der Map unterwegs und habt vielleicht ein paar Leute getroffen. Und jetzt geht es weiter mit dem nächsten Vortrag. Wir haben jetzt als erstes hier Peter Martin, ähm, der schon lange in der Community ist und ähm, aus Holland kommt und äh, aber eigentlich jedes Jahr, oder? Ähm, auf dem deutschen Joomla Day immer mit dabei ist, was ich sehr schön finde. Hm. Danke. So, bitte, Peter. Okay. Um, so, uh, I will do my presentation in English. I will share my screen and I switch off my, um, share my screen, share, oh, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see okay. it. Uh, so, yes, we can see it. Yeah. So. Um, I will uh, talk about uh, Joomla's database today. Uh, the slide will be available later on slides.db8.nl. I'm from Nijmegen. Uh, that's uh, a small town in the east of the Netherlands, which means it's uh, in the west, against the west uh, border of Germany, uh, near North rhine westfalen um, Since 2005, I have my own company. I create websites and uh, do programming for other websites. Uh, since 2018, I have a, a company together with Secret Kramlinger called Data2.eu. Uh, we help our customers uh, with an online uh, tool to create a processing index for the GP GDPR. And we also started with Data2Site.com and we have D2 Content with, it, with um, an extension to make it easier to uh, edit in articles. Um, we are working on a Joomla 4 version at the moment. So, uh, as voluntary work, I have my um, uh, monthly business meeting called Open Coffee Nijmegen, which uh, is a, um, a rather new website, but still in uh, Joomla 3. Um, the Linux Nijmegen, the website is really old and ugly. Um, actually, it's uh, on my to-do list for five years to, uh, to change the, the layout of the website. Uh, the upside that I haven't done it yet is that I can do it in Joomla 4 now. And um, last year I uh, created a new website called thebestwebsite.com. It's in five languages and five top level domains. So also uh, it has uh, thebestwebsite.de and it's about optimizing websites, how, uh, how you can create, uh, improve your website. And finally, I'm a Joomla volunteer in the Joomla community. And at the moment, I am uh, helping out at Joomla forum. And uh, please help out uh, in the Joomla community in any way you can. And you can also in the Joomla Joomla community. Helpen. So um, yeah, let's start with my presentation. Um, I will tell something about databases in general about normalization, about how Joomla's uh, database works. I would like to uh, talk about uh, some of the changes in a Joomla 4 database. And then I would like to uh, look at another uh, database, how uh, another project structures their database. And finally, a small um, summary. So um, if we talk about my SQL databases, a database is a data uh, element collection, and it should be internally consistent and also built for a specific purpose. So there are a couple of principles when you create databases. Each data item should be stored in its own field. Those fields are combined in one table or in tables, and items are columns. Uh, in, in, um, in a column, they should be this of the same type, and each row should have the same columns as well. And each row should be uh, I, I, identifiable. So you could you should easily um, uh, do a select to get the right records. SQL structured query language. In Joomla, uh, we uh, can use Postgres. Postgres. We used to use MS SQL, but 
there were no uh, updates from uh, Microsoft. They they uh, um, supplied an adapter for the MS SQL database, but uh, yeah, they there was no in, much interest in that database type. So now we only have Postgres, Postgres and MySQL or MariaDB, which is a, a drop-in replacement for MySQL. So if you look at the database, it's just files. And files are stored usually in um, a directory called var slash lib slash MySQL. It has all kinds of tables, uh, tables for the data and tables for indexing. You could copy uh, the folder far lib MySQL to another computer, to another server, and hopefully it works, but mostly it won't, or you will have errors, because if a database is in use, then the files are changing all the time. And if you copy it and some somebody changes something in the database, you can have database errors. So uh, better to use a database management to, a tool like a PHP MyAdmin. Or if you like a client on your computer, you can use SQL Pro or I have Linux and I use DB Beaver. I also use PHP Storm, which has an excellent um, view that you can uh, see all the database uh, tables and their contents. Of course, if you are a diehard, you can use the command line interface on Linux or Apple or even the command line on Linux uh, on Windows these days. Or of course, Joomla, because Joomla also does stuff with your database. Um, Joomla is just uh, a sort of interface for your database, and you can do all the things that you can do uh, with Py PHP, MyAdmin, etc. But it's an interface. If you look at database and database performance, um, you can store values, uh, fields as a string or as integer. Integers are faster because they are indexed better. And the date is a string. So if you want to do stuff with uh, a lot of performance and it's about da comparing dates, you better uh, create an extra uh, temporary table and use the Unix timestamps of those dates because it's uh, a counter of uh, all the seconds since 1917, etc. Um, you should index all your tables. Please also use cache because cache is just like um, a sort of photo of the data, of, of the, the, the current data in your database. And it's faster to, to access files directly than using a database edge to, uh, to, to get into the files. Um, don't store images in uh, your database because if you do, uh, they are not cached. And uh, image blobs just take a lot of resources, a lot of um, uh, memory. And then finally, you have JSON data. JSON data is really nice to store uh, parameters, etc. But if you uh, want to create uh, joints from one table to the other, then JSON data is not really suitable. So now let's uh, look at normalization. Let's assume I have a database. It's just one. Um, oh yeah, first of all, what is normalization? Um, if you structure your database um, to reduce the data redundancy and improve uh, integrity, then you are doing normalization. And to, ex to explain this with an example, let's assume I have um, this table with articles all the articles have an ID, they have a title, a description, a category, a category description, an author and an email. What you can see here is that the categories and the author information, it's redundant. It's always the same, or it's always the same from one, like from the Joomla category and then OS category, There's just two different categories. So um, what Joomla does, uh, it has a category and an author field, which stores a number. And the numbers also make it easier to uh, to look up um, all the articles from a certain category. Because if you look for a number, an integer, it's faster than looking for um, a string. So there is an order table. And in the other table, uh, you have the category numbers, which are these, with the title and the description. And in SQL, you just make a join of those. And the same goes for the author. You have a number of the author 
and the name here. So uh, all those articles are from author 42, which is in this case, Peter. So uh, this is a one-to-one -one relation. Um, the user Peter might be in different user groups. And uh, then we uh, use a many-to-many -many relation. So uh, we have different user groups in Joomla. In the past, it was just fixed. Uh, a user was just in one uh, uh, group and you could not make your groups yourself. And, oh no, no, it, no it was not fixed, but uh, there were just a couple of fixed groups. But you have a user user group map. And in this case, you can see that uh, user 42 uh, is in group two, which is registered, and also group eight, which is the super users. So this is a many to many relation and Joomla has a couple of those mapping tables. So uh, ordering in a database, um, a database itself doesn't imply any order. You can order if you want to, to uh, if you give the uh, order by in a, in a query. And then uh, you can order by ID or maybe by title when it's al alphabetical or maybe on the date. But you, Joomla has a lot of those ordering uh, fields. So if I order uh, this article table by ordering, then Linux rules will be the first article if I do it ascending, and D2 content, the second, and Joomla rocks, the third, etc. And this is how a lot of those uh, yeah, um, uh, database tables in Joomla work. However, there's also another uh, kind of uh, data that you want to order, and that's nested categories, I mean nesting. So categories are nested in Joomla, meaning they don't have an ordering table, uh, but they have a parent ID and also left of LFT and or RGT, which left and right, and also a level. So what you can see here is that um, um, Joomla here has parent ID two, which is the content. So Joomla is beneath content, and OS fact is also beneath content, and news also beneath content. And what you can see here: two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. That means that, uh, yeah. There, uh, this 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 gives the order of the of the tables, and to make it clear, uh, I found a really nice website from Mike Hillier, and he explains a lot about uh, nested sets. He also gives a lot of SQL queries that you can use for your own uh, queries, and in this case, um, let's look at electronics at the top. This is a structure of, um, in this case, an organogram of electronics, but uh, you can put this in a database as well. And what you can see here, the one is left and the 20 is right. And to see how many categories are under uh, electronics, you can count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But you can also do the same, uh, something else. You can uh, do a formula, you take the right, minus the left, minus 1, and then divide by 2. So 20 minus 1 is 19, minus 1 is 18, 18 divided by 2, because I have two sides, is 9. So I can see how many uh, sub-child categories it has. And here the LCD is 5 and 6. There is nothing beneath, uh, in between 5 and 6, so it doesn't have any uh, child categories. And this is how Joomla's categories and menus uh, work. So I, uh, want like, I would like to explain uh, a couple of things that happen in Joomla's database. So first of all, what happens if you add a user group in Joomla? And I would like to see what happens when you add a new uh, viewing level for the front end. What happens when you do a new user in the database or give the user permissions to do something in the back end? Um, I, I would like to see, see uh, an admin module added, uh, categories, articles, and menu items. So um, I will show you how this works in a database. So let's meet Jane. Jane, uh, she is a marketing assistant, or no, she is the marketing manager. She writes uh, news articles, and she also needs to um, do the internal marketing news for the company. And it's only internal news. So she uh, should have access to um, public articles and an internal articles. And she should also um, able to write those and edit 
her own articles. So the first thing, um, what I did for uh, for Jane, I created a new user group. So in Joomla 4, I went to users, groups. I created a new user group and I called it marketing group. And I put the marketing group under registered. Um, you can, the best thing to start is under public. In this case, uh, I wanted to have uh, the marketing group also uh, the, the registered. So in this case, I, I used registered as uh, the parent category. Um, what happens in the database? Well, first of all, uh, there is a user groups table. Uh, by the way, I call all my tables in this example here, uh, Jos. This was the old uh, default prefix. Uh, currently with Joomla, uh, this will be random. So in user groups, there will be added a new category. And what you can see here in the user groups as it has left and right, meaning it's also nested. And you can see here 15 and 16, 15 and 16. So there's nothing in between. So a marketing group doesn't have any child categories. The parent ID of this category is two. And I know that two is a registered users. So the registered access level and 10 is just the ID of this field. Um, something else happens. Um, Joomla has an action log, and in the action logs, uh, all the things that administrators do in the back end are logged. So uh, I can see here that there is a, a marketing group, and uh, it's made by uh, the username uh, Peter, that's me, I created it. And this is my username here, my user ID here. And uh, yeah, you cannot see all the things that it says, but uh, it says that I created a new um, uh, user uh, group. The next thing I would like to do is a new view access level. This is only for the front end. So when you create a new category or a new article, you can set the access and by default it's public. And for my uh, uh, website, I would like to have um, different levels. So uh, for the internal marketing news, I would like to have a marketing level. So I created a new level. I called the level marketing level and I assigned it to the marketing group. So the marketing group is the only group that has access to the uh, marketing level on the front end. So in the database, there is a table called view levels and uh, the marketing level is the name. Seven is just the ID and uh, 10 between brackets is uh, the user group. Uh, the, the, um, yeah, the user group that has access to this one. Uh, this is that, this is um, uh, an array. Uh, I can add more numbers here if I want to. Uh, of course, via the Joomla backend. And of course, uh, the, ex the action logs is created. And then something uh, particular happened. There is also a new table. I mean, uh, data in the table called finder types. When I created new uh, few access levels, the finder types were created. Next thing, I want to create a new user because Jane needs uh, to have access. So I created a new user in users manage and I assigned Jane uh, to the registered user group and also to the marketing group. And after that, in the database, we have the user state database table where we have a new uh, record for Jane Smith uh, with the email address and the, the password, which is hashed. And Jane also needs um, to have a mapping. So Jane is also mapped in the user user group map with her number 770 is her user ID. It's mapped to two which is the registered and 10, which is the marketing level. Again, action logs and the action log says that a new user has been created by me. And uh, yeah. Um, so now Jane uh, can log into the front end, but there is no backend login for her yet because registered users cannot log in into the backend. You need to be of manager, administrator or super admin or in a group that has access to the backend. To set access to the backend in Joomla 4, you go to system user permissions and then uh, settings. And in the settings, you first go to the global 
configuration at the top. Then you select marketing group. And then you have all the permissions that you want to set to the marketing group in a global way. In this case, I only changed the admin login to allowed. And what happens in the database? Oh, hold on. Before I did so, I can add Jane to the backend, but then she cannot, can't do anything. She just sees that she's logged in and that's it. But I want to give her also permissions to use uh, the articles, com content. So... I just uh, did the global configuration to log in. So now she is able to log in into the backend. And the second thing I do, I, I go to articles, which is under the components in under permissions. And I again, I go to the marketing group. And then in this case, I give her access to the admi access administrator interface. Uh, she can create, allowed, edit state and edit own. So she can create new articles. She can uh, change them public or uh, registered, um, um, trashed or uh, unpublished, or uh, she can uh, edit their own articles, but she can't create uh, edit the articles that exist or delete. I didn't configure it now here. So Joomla has a table called assets, and in assets, it will uh, record all the things that people can do. So what you can see here is that core login admin, so people who can log in into the admin, it was only a six, which is a one. One means true, and it has been changed to six one and 10 one. So 10, which is the marketing uh, group, now also has access to login into the backend. And in com content, uh, core create, um, and also core manage, it also has 10 one, meaning user group, uh, is allowed to do core management in, uh, yeah, in this. So they have access to the management, so the, the, the administ administrator interface. Again, action logs, which is done all the time. And there are a couple of changes in the table extensions. So um, extensions has all the um, uh, extensions of Joomla with their configuration settings. And what you can see here that um, the custom fields enable is now one and workflow enable is zero. Um, before I created this new user, there was no workflow enabled. And now it is, uh, sorry, it is not because it's now set to zero. But if you want to use a workflow, um, then it will be changed here also. So we're halfway there. We just need the admin module, category, article, and menu item. So, if Jane logs in, she uh, has access to the articles and she, she can create new articles. However, um, she doesn't have a title and she doesn't have any uh, icons here, like new, etc. So she cannot use it. That is because uh, you need a title and a toolbar module, which are backend modules. But by default, they are assigned to the special level, meaning that if you are in a special group like the super administrators, or administrators or managers, then you have access to those. In this case, I uh, just duplicated those modules and those modules are now also assigned to the marketing level. So um, I have title for the marketing level and toolbar for the marketing level. And now Jane has also the articles and new on top of it. So if you do like this, what happens in a database? Of course, uh, we have new modules these are just copies of the old modules. I mean, these are reference to the modules. And the second thing is assets, because maybe you want to uh, do something with um, the management permissions on those. I didn't it just record in assets table. And of course, we have a reference in the module underscore menu. The mod modules underscore menu is um, a mapping for the menus and the modules. So um, if I want to uh, have this module only be enabled to uh, certain mod uh, menus, then um, I should configure the, the zero to the menu ID. Uh, in this case, it should be available for all backend menus. So um, let's create uh, content. And we start with creating two categories, one for news and one for the marketing news. 
the news will be uh, public news with access public marketing news will be a uh, marketing level because it's only for internal marketing news so what happens in the database if we create those um, again we have two uh, new references in the categories table and uh, what you can see here is that uh, they have an asset ID and a parent ID and the assets ID the 98 is this record the 1990 asset ID is this record so there are two assets for the new categories and uh, both categories are uh, under parent one and one is the root of uh, com content so um, do we have more yeah i think the, yeah we also have uh, right and left but um oh yeah here uh, 38 and 39 and 40 and 41 so they don't have any subcategories they are on the second level uh, the first level is the root so action log again and you think that's it but there is more if you create new categories also uh the yos finder links will create new references to those and find link items this is a mapping table and we have a finite taxonomy uh, which is a, a type of uh, content in this time in this case it's uh, the category type is added uh, the language is uh, empty because it's uh, for all languages and we have also a finite taxonomy map this is also a mapping table so um, I have some uh, finer terms. I created two categories. One is called marketing news. The other is marketing, uh, sorry, news and marketing news. But because of news, it's here. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's not marketing news are two words. So uh, this only, it, it annexes only the words. And then we have even more because when you create uh, something with categories or with content, with articles, then the history table uh, is used. So in the history table, um, the fir this version is uh, uh, saved. So the information about it. And when I, when I change it, uh, it will again be saved in the history table. So now are we almost ready? We need only uh, some articles and of course menu items. So I created an article called 4,000 holes found in Blackburn, Lancashire. It's public news. And I did the same. I created auto marketing campaign, which is uh, only for a uh, marketing department. So the access marketing level. And in the database, of course, two references again in the content table. And action log again. It stores the things I do in the back end. Assets again, because uh, I can do uh, permissions on those articles. And finder links again, because uh, the finder, uh, the smart search, is also indexing this kind of stuff. I have finder links terms again. I have taxonomy. In this case, the author, Peter Martin, is also stored in database. And I also have two categories, one for news and one for the marketing news. And this is all in the taxonomy. Then uh, also, again, a taxonomy map, a mapping table. And I have a lot of finding finder terms. So I did not um, specify them all, because uh, then I need uh, maybe uh, 10, 20 sheets. So what you can see here, uh, the first article, which is about uh, whole, uh, holes in Blackburn, um, Lancashire. It's a song from the Beatles. And I sing about Albert Hall also. And here is Albert and here is Beatles, because I mentioned the Beatles in the article. And the marketing article was about uh, how awesome the workflow feature in Joomla is. And therefore here it says workflow. So it's all indexed. And again, we have a history table, which keeps track of the history of the, of the articles. We also have workflow associations. This table is new and this is used because you can use workflow in articles. You can create your public, uh, your publishing workflow. Benjamin Trinkel uh, has done a presentation in the morning about this. So finally, uh, menus. We create two menu items, both of the category block, because maybe I want to add articles in the future. And um, 
One is for uh, the news, which is public, and the other is for marketing news, which is marketing level. What happens in the database is just this. This is it. Uh, there will be a menu item uh, in main in the uh, main menu uh, in the menu table for news and also for marketing news. That's it. We are done with uh, the creation of all these items in the database. So Jane is happy because she now can log in into the backend and start writing news articles and also internal marketing news. So what happened in Joomla 4 with the database? Database changes. Uh, since Joomla 3.10, to uh, when I compare it to Joomla 4, we have less tables. We have more rows and we have uh, uh, smaller database tables. I mean, it's only uh, 4 MB megabyte instead of the 4.2 before. And this is just an overview. But what happened in the database? Well, uh, some of the tables got bigger because there were more assets in the assets table. Some of the tables uh, uh, field has been removed. So the X reference uh, field, which was in contact details and also content and also another table, it was removed. And therefore, it's a really slight, tiny, uh, less uh, RAM. Um, the core lock searches has been removed because this is, was for com search, which is not in Joomla anymore. We now use the finder. And the finder has a logging table. So instead of the log searches, we now have a final logging. It's new. Also new is finder underscore links underscore terms without anything behind it. It replaced 16 tables, namely finder underscore links underscore terms zero until F, which is makes it uh, 16 tables. These have been uh, removed and this has been restructured in another way. So uh, the history table is new because it used to call, be called UCM history. It has been renamed. We have a new table called mail underscore templates. Uh, yesterday there was a presentation uh, that uh, I think it was from Sigrid Kramlinger about um, uh, the new features in Joomla. And the mail template is one of those. And the other one is template overrides. And those have a table because the functionality has to be stored. We have template styles and template template styles uh, has now two rows instead of four because we had four um, templates and now we have only two. The UTF-8 conversion table has been re removed. We don't use it anymore. And we have five uh, different of new tables, uh, web authentication credentials. Um, uh, today, um, uh, there was a presentation from uh, Tobias Sulauf about the um, web authentic um, web uh, API, which uses this table. And Benjamin Trenkel did something about workflows, which uses these workflow tables. Those are all new because of the new feature. So um, that was Joomla. I would like to uh, look at another database of another project uh, to do how do how they do it. So. Let's compare Joomla 4 with WordPress 5.8.1, which is the, the, the last, the latest release. Joomla has much more tables than WordPress. Uh, Joomla has much more row than WordPress. And our size is twice the size of a WordPress uh, table when you start with the project. So this is a, a WordPress database table. This is in PHP my admin. And I assume that it's difficult to read. So I recreated it in another way. Um, these are the table names, these are the rows, and these are the sizes. When you first install WordPress, the WP options is 64 kilobyte. When you log in into, in the, into the backend, it's still that 40, 64 kilobyte. But when you go to the front end, um, it increases, and then it becomes 1.5 megabyte. I'm not sure triggered it but i am sure that in the back end something happens that it gets new information that is stored in the options table so let's meet jack he is working in another company also uh, uh working in the marketing department he also write news articles and they also have internal news but they use wordpress 
So <clears throat> let's do the same what we just did with the Joomla core and now with the WordPress core. Let's start creating user groups, user levels, and then a user. Uh, oops, uh, you cannot create user groups in WordPress. Um, you cannot create your own viewing levels. However, you can create a user and also select a fixed role. We can choose between these five roles, subscriber, contributor, author, editor, administrator. Let's use editor. Okay, so uh, Jack, uh, he uh, becomes an editor in this website. So what happens in WordPress if I create Jack as an editor? Well, first of all, they also have a users table. And in the users table, they also store uh, the um, passwords in a good way, like uh, they also use um, encryption. So I cannot know what it is. And they also have another table uh, which has user meta information. So if I go back, uh, I can see here the username is Jack, but uh, the name of Jack, oh yeah, it says Jack Smith here. But other information for this user is in the meta table. Uh, like maybe a uh, description, maybe the website that they have, uh, if they, uh, what they, what administrator color they have, these kind of things, so things. And also the WP user level, which is seven. In this case, he's an editor because seven is editor in that project. So uh, let's do something with the categories. I would like to have two categories, one for uh, the news and one for the marketing news. But marketing news should be internal. However, you cannot configure viewing levels yourself. You can only select uh, public, I think uh, password protected. And there was another one, I forgot about it, but that's it. So what happens when you create a new category? Well, the WP options, something changed, or something is added there. Uh, it's called category children. And there's also a terms table, WP terms, and it has a new, two new tables, news and marketing news. Another thing is there is, um, oh, uh, it's not terms, it's term taxonomy. So I have the two categories that has, have been created. And this is funny, they have a count, which is zero. There are no, there are no um, uh, articles in those categories. So let's create two articles, 4,000 holes, which is public and autumn campaign, which is, well, we I want to, to set it to a, a level, uh, but it's, I can't. So anyway, just create them. So I made a couple of mistakes. I mean, uh, this system is not uh, my usual system. And I created an article, I saved it, and I saved it again. And I have five references in the table WP posts, which are two articles and revisions. So uh, article five and eight, five, and eight, those were the articles that I created. And then I uh, did save again, so there was a revision. And only five and eight are in the taxonomy table. And there was also a term taxonomy. So uh, you see a category again. And what you can see here, one. So now both categories have one article in it. So they count card articles with a value in a database, which is a bit weird because SQL is really terrific to do a count. You can do count uh, articles of count ID for um, articles uh, have category one or whatever. Uh, they, they, they store it in a database as a value. This is a bit weird. The other thing is I, would to, I want to create a menu like in Joomla, a main menu. So when I create an, a new menu called main menu in W P terms, a new entry is created and it's called main menu. There's also um, in the taxonomy table uh, called nav menu and it's a reference to this menu. And there is user meta because uh, I created it. There's some information about uh, probably who created this, this menu item. And something else, I now have a menu but I need still to assign it to a menu item. In Joomla, you can uh, assign a menu. I mean, you have a module and the module is a menu module and you can assign it to a place, but you also have to assign to a menu. So it uses that menu. In WordPress, you need to assign a menu 
that you created to a team location menu location. So what happens is uh, in WP options, uh, there is a small change. So um, there was something called nav menu locations, which didn't have one, anything. Now it has uh, the primary. So uh, something is assigned to the primary. And I created two menu items. So what happened? Uh, there is in the post meta, there's a lot of metadata data about the menus that I created. And they have in WP posts, they have two new uh, references to my new tables, I will, to my new menu items. And I see here, this is my local system, that the local URL is added into database. So if I move this to another place, I have another, an, uh, an issue. So uh, menu items in posts, hard-coded URLs, and also they store a uh, sort of date underscore GMT, and they also have date. What's, why two date fields? I don't know. So um, if I create posts, oh, no, no if I, if I save the menu, yeah? yeah. yeah? You, you have um, five minutes. OK, no problem. So if I uh, save the menu, then in posts, um, there is also a reference, and also in the term relationships. Uh, they also have references in term taxonomy in term, and it's, it's been changed. Uh, now the NAV menu has two. So also, again, they count in the database itself. So WordPress has uh, WP options. They use it for all their settings, and therefore it's 1.2 megabyte when you just start. They use the uh, WP posts for articles for the history of articles and, and menu items, etc., and also to store menu items. They have a WP terms, which they use for storing categories, for menus, and for tags. And they also count in the database tables itself. I don't know why they do that. So uh, all these things, uh, Jack is not uh, happy uh, with that, I think. In my opinion, the database tables of this system are not really optimized. So um, finally, to the end, uh, I have here select star from presentation. That means that I will do the whole presentation again because star is everything. That's not true. Um, my presentation was about uh, MySQL databases and Joomla database. I taught you something about SQL, about management of database tables. I uh, explained something about normalization and how, how nested sets work. I uh, showed you what happens in a Joomla database when you use user groups, when you create new viewing levels, users, permissions, modules, categories, articles, and menu items. I uh, showed some new tables in the Joomla 4, and which has been removed. And I showed something about how another project like WordPress uh, uses tables to structure uh, their data. So uh, that's it. Are there any questions? Thank you, Peter. Hat jemand Fragen? Dann kann er gerne hier vorkommen zur Bühne und die Fragen gerne stellen. Hm, sieht nicht so aus. Thank you, Peter, very much for your session. You're welcome. I think there are no questions. Uh, ah, Roland. I don't have a question. I just have a um, um, a little change. Peter called the program DB Beaver, but it's called DBeaver, the database management tool. Oh, cheers. <laughs> Just in case people start looking for the wrong uh, thing, they're probably still going to find it, but it's called G-Beaver. Okay. Thanks for that. That's all. Thank you. And of course, come to my next presentation. Yeah. <laughs> it's about overriding classes. Yes. But this is in the other room from the other regular room. labs. Yeah. Yeah. We have to run to the other room now, I think. Yes. <laughs> I have 15 minutes. You can hold the shift key, yeah? you can run faster. Oh, that's great. Uh, is it also a trick you learned uh, playing um, Link or Zelda? The uh, no, they told me during the uh, pre-testing. Okay. <laughs>
Anyway, I'll uh, see you later. Nice yeah. presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or additions? No. I think there are no more questions. So, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for your attention and uh, yeah, have a nice day with the other presentations.